bags were whole lies. Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here with you, and I am your Wednesday night host for Body Bags. And man, the summer is just unfolding, isn't it? And uh, being down here in Georgia, it is hot. How do I know that? Because I just got done cutting some grass, and it is hot. Anyhow, it is Wednesday night. And we are going to do yeah, some HP Lovecraft, at least given by Stuart Gordon, 2001, his film Dagon. And uh, what I have for you is uh, the Vestron release. Now I have to say, this film, this is the first time this film has uh, gotten into my collection. And what's weird about this film just thinking about it, is this, this movie is 2001. Whenever I think about Day Gone and my earliest memories of having first seen it, I don't know why, but my mind just catapults back to the 80s or even early 90s, and I just assume it's an older film, but it's not, 2001. But that's interesting because Stuart Gordon shares an interesting similarity with H.P. Lovecraft in terms of the source material that is used, and in this case, the film Dagon is a blending or a meshing of both the short story Dagon and Shadow Over Innsmouth. Now, H.P. Lovecraft wrote Dagon at the early point of his career, I believe it was 1917, and Shadow Over Innsmouth comes at the end of his career, 1936. And that's interesting because you get HP as a young writer early on, but then you get him at his most polished, and unfortunately, uh, he did die an untimely death. Um, he was diagnosed with a form of cancer, and unfortunately, had he gone to see the doctor about a year removed uh, from when he does end up in the hospital, uh, it's been said that he may have well had it treated at least enough to get more time on Earth Unfortunately, when he does go in, it's too late, and, uh, and it's maybe, I don't know, I can't remember, four or five months in the hospital, and he, he goes on. And uh, so, but anyways, what's interesting is Stuart Gordon, of course, is known for a small handful of H.P. Lovecraft-inspired films in the 80s. I'm thinking Reaminator, um, uh, Castle Freak might be, but that's in the 90s, um, The Beyond. Um, too directly inspired by H.P. Lovecraft. And when you watch those films, not thinking about the source material, um, you know, they're, they're sort of cult films in their own right. <laughs> but when you, uh, excuse me, when you read the actual short stories, at least with Reaminator for sure, that is, uh, that is a, a, a short story in like, told I believe in like three acts, and you really could pull off an incredible trilogy based off of that original short story. But what Stuart Gordon did was he sort of just took some of the major thematic elements and he did something absolutely off the wall and crazy. And of course, everyone loves Reaminator. And, uh, but I would venture a guess that a lot of people who really love that film haven't actually sat down and read the original short story. Some have, I'm sure. Um, but with Day Gone, it's interesting. Just as HP, you get a kind of a blending of his early material his his uh, at the end of his at the end of his life material blended into a film it's like what you what you get out of Stuart Gordon is and interestingly it, it's the polished effect of maybe perhaps someone who just says you know what I'm gonna try my best to give HP his rightful due not that he really did it previously but there just seems to be a much more serious approach a tone about this film that's more in line with the source material, which is, so it, it is probably one of my favorite, uh, when you put H.P. Lovecraft's name up at the top, uh, then fill it in. Uh, you get your best Lovecraft inspiration though in films that do not have the name across. Thinking Alien, The Thing, I mean, there's just a plethora of stuff out there uh, that is inspired, at least on some level, 
It's, it's been said that H.P. Lovecraft, in fact, may have surpassed Edgar Allan Poe for the amount that he has sort of saturated our culture with all this Cthulhu myth, uh, mythos and just uh, the amount of um, extended universe literature there is on his original material. Um, but of course, you've got a wealth. And here, here's just a little bit of my H.P. Lovecraft collection. Um, a lot of his short stories, his poetry, of course, Tijashi. Um, who uh, wrote I Am Providence, double volume biography on H.P. Lovecraft. He is sort of like the historian. Now, what makes Vestron release really awesome is S.T. Joshi has an interview on about 22 minutes where he talks about really Lovecraft. He talks a little bit about Dagon, uh, the film, and he does give the film props, which surprises me in a way because as a, as a Lovecraft historian, I know he's very particular so when he gives some props to a film in light of the source material, you know you got something pretty good here, and Dagon is good. Basically, what you have in the film is you got uh, Paul and Barbara. Uh, he's a stock market guy, and they're vacationing off the coast of Spain. And uh, he's, he's in the midst of having this dream, and uh, really bizarre absolutely bizarre dream but what he doesn't realize is something from the other side or not very far off is reaching out to him and he's got ties to this little coastal very creepy coastal town right off the coast where they're at and the minute he wakes up from that dream and realizes he's back on the boat and they're vacationing and they've got <coughs> excuse me a couple friends with them things go from well pretty good to pretty bad and then ultimately it just spirals out of control immediately almost right off the bat the boat crashes off some rocks uh, they're stuck Paul and Barbara have to um, go off to shore to try to get help and, and that's really the beginning of the end the minute they get into this village it really is it's it's a little bit of Dagon but it's a whole lot of Insmith in fact um, the name that they use for the town Boca, I think, is the Spanish equivalent of Innsmouth, or close to it. Uh, so there's, it's, it's really more shadow over Innsmouth than it is Dagon. Dagon is a short story of a World War I um, guy whose uh, ship's been sunk by Germans, and he's kind of just out on a raft floating off in the sea, and he wakes up and to find himself surrounded by an endless amount of land. The ocean's gone, and he's resting on this really muddy, kind of mucky sort of material, this ground that's sort of just come up. And uh, there goes his adventure over a few days, and then, of course, he practically goes insane from what he will eventually see. Innsmouth, though, takes place in a New England coastal town, and it really involves, like the film Paul, but in a slightly different way, uh, involves a young man who really just as out of, well, out of curiosity, wants to visit Innsmouth, even though it's a town that has since been sort of relegated to history in a way. No one goes there. No one has any dealings with it. It's sort of just that town that's got a really terrible history. And what really sort of lies behind the history is really you've got some villagers who basically abandon their Christianity in light of worshiping Dagon in hopes that their industry, their fishing industry, their livelihood will come back. And it does in a big way. But unfortunately with things like this, there are always strings attached. And in this case, they really do sell themselves out to Dagon in a way that not only transforms their minds and their inner being, but really their bodies. And what you have is sort of a reverse evolutionary effect in a way I guess but um so really that probably is in a roundabout way the plot um my thoughts you know I love Dagon is a, is a cool this is easily my favorite Stuart Stuart Gordon approach to an H.P. Lovecraft adaption and man I'm telling you just uh <coughs> excuse me the characters um the atmosphere, the, the very creepy atmosphere of the villagers and uh, where this film is shot, it's a Spanish film, and where they shoot it, it just lends itself to some really creepy atmosphere. And 
Uh, I will say this, on a negative side, some of the CGI that is employed at the beginning and towards the end, um, really at the beginning, mostly at the beginning, is really shoddy at best. I mean, it is. There's a few points where you just really uh, squirm. And unfortunately, it's such a great transfer, it's hard not to notice it. Um, but what's also cool, too, is you do get a little bit of Cthulhu, the monster, uh, towards the end, just enough to satisfy, you know, whatever it is that you're looking for, but not a whole lot to put on display some really horrible CGI. Um, so, really the film just delivers a pretty neat view of an H.P. Lovecraft adapted story. And, uh, of course, if you want some really good stuff, you gotta go to Call of Cthulhu. Um, it's really maybe the best film out there in terms of um, taken from one of his short stories um, and it's I think it was produced and made by the HP Lovecraft Society historical society maybe but anyway so uh, a little bit of Lovecraft a little bit of Dagon the Vestron release I would say <coughs> you really only have three choices umbrella put out one where you it's not floating around on Amazon yet from what I see so you got to go to umbrella which means getting it from Australia from their website um, or the DVD copy which generally hangs around the 10 13 dollar mark but lately it's up around the 20 for whatever reason but Vestron I would say it's almost 30 that right around 30 dollars but I would say it's worth it because you get SD Josh in their interview Mick Garris interview Stuart Gordon you got multiple commentaries the making of I mean you just got a lot of stuff TV spots radio spots. I can't remember if there's radio spots but I mean there's a lot of stuff it's a great Vestron release and it's it's a great film it's a great Lovecraft inspired film and man Stuart Gordon I think he knocked it out of the park with this particular film way way more so than Reaminator and I, I enjoy Reaminator for what it is um, but in terms of getting closer to the heart of Lovecraft you know Stuart Gordon said in one of the interviews I think with Mick Garris he said you know if Lovecraft were here right now and were able to talk to me you know he'd hate me it, it, and it's really just, be, it's the difference in what is in the literature and what it ultimately gets conveyed on screen. And it is difficult. Lovecraft is a difficult thing to express visually. And uh, in fact, we still, we're still waiting on that big, huge budget studio film. We almost had, we almost had it with the, at the Mountains of Madness. Uh, I want to say uh, James Cameron was in line to produce. Tom Cruise was in the lead role. Um, Guillermo del Toro was going to direct. I mean, everything was falling into place. It was like seconds from green light, and then the studio got cold feet, pulled the rug out from under the whole thing, and we lost probably the first real attempt at a huge, big studio venture into some Lovecraft. And I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope that's still on the back burner somewhere waiting to be made, but I think they probably missed the opportunity, and it really is frustrating when you get that close to something that great. And uh, it, it could have, I think, it really could have opened up the wellspring of just a lot of H.P. Lovecraft stuff. I mean, there's such a wealth of material to dive into, and uh, it's some good stuff right here, man. So anyways, Rob from Georgia, it's VHS 82 apostrophe, and of course, this is Wednesday night, and this is your review for Body Bags, and so if you have never checked out Dagon, do it! What are you waiting for? As always, Go Bills!